I hate to break the fishing news up here, Amchuk, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. We just traded a migraine in for like an orgasm. You might want to mark that down. You're yep. Down. All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get today. Monday episode of the Real Life Podcast brought to you by the Millwoods Golf Course. Private club conditions for under $100. Greens are always immaculate. The relaxing driving range with music playing and lots of targets. The vibes are unreal out at Millwoods. You can also follow them online at Millwoods GC or visit the MillwoodsGolfCourse.ca or get ready to come into the Oilers Nation Open at the beginning of September or end of August. Launching soon. August 30th. August 30th. Millwood's Golf and Country Club. Hell yeah. It is going uh, to be a great time. Yeah. It's launching maybe this week or next week. Going to have a lot June, of, I was told. Going to have a lot of cool friends joining us at this year's tournament. So you really? won't want to miss out. Oh, cool. Well, one of them you know about. Oh, golf friend. Golf yeah, friend. Mention anybody or what the fuck? Well, no, because it's maybe not confirmed yet. So oh. I won't say anything. Oh, I don't even know it's who it is. Tease. Tyler, your empty will be there. This is, a, he's got me teased. I'm excited. Yeah. You're going now? I think I'm going to go. Wow. Hey. <laughs> Uh, the Oilers aren't golfing yet. Hello. Chalmers, yeah. are we still in it? We said last week. Oh, will we my still be God, in it are on we Monday? in it? We're so damn in it right now. <laughs> I. How much fun was it? I said, uh, it. I've had my two favorite hockey experiences this year with the nation and with this Oilers hockey team. Going to Mullet Arena, I said, was one of my top five. I think it might have been, you know, close to number one. It was far surpassed by Saturday's game. <laughs> yeah. oh. And it was not even just a game. It was the day. It was getting down to Greta at like 3.30 and having a bite to eat and a pregame beer and just watching all the people streaming in and, and the excitement level was high and then walking to the game and my hands were sore after the first period from just high-fiving. I lost my voice in the third. <laughs> I'm it. just getting over the hangover right now. Wow. I still don't think I'm fully over it. I'm a little foggy. Um, but it was <laughs> It was a perfect storm for us because we had Father's Day the next day, so you knew you had a green light. Yeah. Green light to sleep in. Green light to do nothing. You know, didn't matter how you came home. One shoe off, one shoe somewhere stuck downtown. Didn't matter. It was great. You still trying to find that shoe? No, I found it. You lost a shoe? No, I wear sandals. So I was, if I would have lost a shoe, I'd have been barefoot. <laughs> I got commented at least 10 times by people being like, sandals to a hockey game? Unreal. I'm like, guys, it's really not that big of a deal. You've been to Phoenix? I literally wear them on the bench of my son's hockey games in the middle of you're the You're going to get a toe cut off is what you're going to do. No, no, no. Yeah, I know how to tuck them. I know how to squish toes. Stay away from dogs, right, Waz? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But just the the amount where right we walk in the building, we first see like shake and bake. The amount of people dressed up. It's awesome, man. It's it funny how it's becoming so the thing we do. That's Everybody why I in costumes. Like, I loved watching on Twitter on Sunday once I the fog started to clear. All the media from out of town that were just enjoying the spectacle that is an oiler. Someone playoff. called it Comic Con for hockey. Yeah, that, that was, was Greg Wachinski. That was story. awesome. And because there's so much content happening in the time, and you're trying to like absorb it, and you're trying to just live it, you don't want to be on your phone. It took me probably three hours of just like scrolling Instagram and Twitter the next day just to like see everything. Oh, there was so much happening, man. So much happening. Shania at one end, the Sportsnet trailer in the Moss Pit. The sing-along to Shania at the end of the game. The oh. four sing-alongs in the building to two Bon Jovi songs. Yeah. I mean, God, it became just karaoke. Night and the eight <laughs> one shelling. Just a drum. Woo-hoo. Fastest team I've ever seen in person. That was a, in the first five minutes of the game, when I was seeing guys who looked and like, this is an old cliche, but like literally look like, they were playing for their life when we were down in front of Bob and they guys were falling all over the diving for pucks, like playing with the most reckless abandonment you could ever play. Like, it's just, it was a different level and the game never slowed down. It was so fast. It was like, it was, I wasn't that greased at the game, but it was hard to like totally focus all the time. It was so fast. It's such a fast game. And you were in the lower bowl. We were in the lower bowl. It's faster down there. Right behind Bob got to see that amazing first penalty kill goal. We started to get a, when you score eight goals, you and the people around you start to get a routine. It's not like you're not missing high fives after the third oh, or fourth yeah. one. It was, it was me and my friend, Josh hug. 
We both turn around. I handshake husband behind, or, or as high five husband behind, high five wife behind, and then firm handshake to the guy sitting next to Josh. <laughs> and it was like clockwork. <laughs> we mastered this thing. It was amazing. But not only to that, before the game even started, I was blown away by the amount of people that I would talk to. And the first guy, I ran into a guy named Brett, standing by himself at Greta. I'm getting a drink at the bar. He comes up and he says, guys, I love what you guys do. I flew in. I just got here from Toronto for this game. And I'm like, awesome. Like, who you you going to the game? Who you going? He goes, nope, just by myself. I just flew here by myself. And I'm going to watch this game at Greta by myself. Damn. And I'm just going to, I just wanted to be in the atmosphere. Good and I was bro. blown away. I was like. That was my buddy too that I hung out with on Saturday. Yeah. You saw that guy. Hey. No, no. I was, my buddy flew in from Vancouver. Oh, your buddy did. And for game three, he goes, I didn't care if I was there at the moss pit or at the bar. I just wanted to be in the city. Yeah. The, the girl in front of me, there was people, a couple of people that I saw me, they were like taking pictures and they were making Kind of jokes about the girl sitting in front of me. She was wearing a John Ramsey United States hockey jersey, the number five. Pretty random jersey to wear at a hockey game, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we couldn't help it. We had to find out where these two women, what what their story was, why they had this jersey. Is that a Miracle on Ice jersey? Yeah, it's a Miracle on Ice jersey. Did you have to look up Ramsey 5 to know it was John? I did. Or did you know that off the... Cowboy hat. I don't totally think I do know that. I might be making this up, but I've heard the name John Ramsey. No, no, it could be right. Before, I so thought you looked him it up. It could be right. No, I didn't. I would never know that. But I just couldn't help it during the intermission. So, like, you got to plan these games. It's either the last three minutes or the first three minutes of the period. You got to go to the bathroom, get mm-hmm. your drink so that you can sit and mm-hmm. not so you have a be chance. In. Yep. So, we're sitting in the intermission and I just say, I'm like, hey, uh, that's an interesting jersey to wear to a game like a playoff game in Edmonton. She mm-hmm. goes, yeah, we, you know, we just flew in from, from LA today for this game. And I'm like, okay, what the, like reason? Like is Oilers your favorite team or what? Do you-? No, she plays hockey in LA. Uh, this is the daughter, the girl wearing the John Rams jersey. So we wanted to come to the game. What? We just, we just need it. We, we, we wanted is to your see dad, Quentin Tarantino. Like, and, I was like, on, money yeah. bag. and I was like, that's a lot of money. She's like, it wasn't cheap, but we didn't like get oh. into numbers. But again, like just people wanting to be, if you live in this city and you're going down to the moss pit or you're like us and you go to Greta and you, you're in this atmosphere for maybe just a watch party when the team's out of town, you probably take for granted the atmosphere around you and how lucky we are to be in the atmosphere people are flying from all over north it's, america it's like inter, it's like an international spectacle not right even now. be in yeah. the building at times right like these people were in the building but brent my buddy from toronto that i just met for two minutes bought him a beer he just wanted to be downtown edmonton how about our kiwi buddy cam Call yeah crazy. kiwi buddy cam, New Who, yeah from Big New kiwi Z- No, not Big Kiwi. Big Kiwi's back in the motherland. Uh, But uh, Cam came up. He made a deal in 2016 with his buddy from Edmonton at a wedding they were at somewhere that he was going to save $100 a month until the Oilers make the Stanley Cup. Come on. And so they did. And he went. He's here. He's like, he's like, it just it just took longer than than planned. So I got way more money to spend than I wow, thought I would need. So I, so I got some money for the next one too. I'm like, sweet. That's no joke. Can I tell you about I these also guys? love just as you, to yeah. tag onto your jersey thing. The ghosts oh. that were out on Saturday. <laughs> Nedved. Nedved. I saw Joffrey Lupel. A lot of 06 like, jerseys out yeah, last night. A on, lot on of Saturday. ghosts. And they are just the best. I love seeing those unicorns out in the wild because people were dusting them off for that game. You should have seen us at uh, Greta before when we when I met Cam from New Zealand. And he empties his pockets on the table. And was he pull out? Packet of tobacco. No, that's the other gold. guy. Oh, that's that's, that's the, the guy from Australia. Oh, okay, whatever. There was two there people from two people. over there, and one of them. They're like, yeah, we roll our own cigarettes because it's way cheaper here, there. <laughs> so we're all like, so me, Josh, this guy, we're like, Let's class have a cigarette rolling competition. So we're all just sitting there rolling cigarettes at the table in Greta. That's when I knew. Tonight was special when we were sitting at Greta at four o'clock in the afternoon. No, pouch of tobacco. Pouch of tobacco, rolling cigarettes with zigzag. And like they They're have like, Chalmers, like, how are you so good at this? Do you roll tobacco? You're <laughs> you like, know, never in my life. <laughs> I've never done it. But it was just fun. Like we went out for lunch, my buddy from Vancouver, and just he goes, I'm just happy to see all the jerseys around. Everybody had something on. Everybody had a jersey on, a hat on. There's flags everywhere. The vibes were excellent. Having a couple of pops in the sun. 
doesn't get better. Yeah, yeah. and it was good weather. Oh yeah, it was the, great weather. The people that just made it a point to put. 19 flags on their car and drive back and forth in front of Roger. It adds As, to everything. No, they played an important it. role. Every little thing that people did adds to the excitement. But like it's to say to yourself, you know how I'm going to spend the hour and a half before the game <laughs> is I'm going to drive my jacked up F-350 with eight flags on it back and forth honking the horn. It's so real. There's a guy with, with like a, 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 an XM5. The white one? The white one. Yeah. yeah. He's got like a cup on the hood he's got, <laughs> and he's got like a custom horn. Yeah. When there you were, go to other cities and they're like, oh, everybody gets a towel on the seat with a cool logo on it. You're like, oh, the opposite is here where you're like, we're going to organize our own parade every day for <laughs> yeah. two and a half And months. you know what? Like, so I don't know if we say it by name, but like Yag Wave, it's made me think that if you go to the Moss Pit, there is a. 120% chance you yes. are going to see or witness <laughs> no. or be in a or fight die. Yeah. or yeah. die. Yeah. And it's just not Every, the case. It's just not It's a magical case. spot. But it, if you were to like Yeg Wave an Elks game, just that many people somewhere getting drunk, there's always going to be bullshit. Yeah, there's always idiots. There, there doesn't mean that it's a one, bad thing. The o- there was not one negative experience from walking around high-fiving everybody that I saw. The only thing that I took away from that night that I wasn't crazy about was when I got back to Greta, it came flooding into me how old I am. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Man alive. Did I not fucking fit in there? <laughs> oh shit. And dude, people are getting way taller. I don't know. If, like, I'm telling you, people are growing taller. You guys got, I felt like I fit in fine at Greta. It was a great evening. There was no, it was great at Greta. It, Greta was popping off. What I actually liked but when I, I went think there. I've somewhat aged out of that, that kind of scenario, that kind of scene. No, really it was time when, of night. when I, yeah, at I mean, late at night, but actually what I liked about Greta, cause I was just doing hot laps the whole time is like the outer perimeter. I liked, cause I felt like, I mean, granted, I know I'm in my twenties though, but I felt like I fit in more cause it was an older crowd. Like, the patio was an older crowd of people oh. sitting down in the outskirts. Then the middle dance floor was like, yeah, that's yeah. where the young people were. <laughs> like I, I would walk through there and I would feel old. Yeah. Um, it was, but the Greta outskirts of Greta, the patio at Greta is unbelievable. Oh, so oh, good. Yeah, I love that patio. And, and the fact that the line is right next to it just yeah. adds some, an element of people watching that you get to do. Uh, and then dude. just like all the cars driving by with the flags or even the fire department went by a couple of times and oh, they're honking the, the horns yeah. and everybody Everyone goes bananas. Um, Liam said, because Liam took an Uber to and from the game, even though he was just working at it. And he went for a walk from the rink to get an Uber at the ledge. Cause I think he thought it would be cheaper. And he said there was a guy, guys in their cars just with a case of beer, just going down the street, lobbing them out of the car of people. Yeah. So this guy just like threw Liam a beer and Liam's oh, like, it's great. Out of beer. Community. The walk from Rogers to Greta was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was something. It was like, it was just, it was like a pilgrimage, man. Just like everyone out there is so happy. High Boss pit was still buzzing I after. Had, I said I had to put my hand down, stop giving high fives. It was starting to hurt. You just start. You just uh, giving so many. It just you had to. Oh man, yeah, it was magic. It was magic. Now, should we talk about the game? I know we kind of talked about the game. Let's talk about the game well, on the ice. Well, yeah, okay, let's talk about the game on the ice a little bit, and we'll turn a couple of these into Keep It or Cut It's brought to you by our friends over at Great Clips. It is North America's largest hair salon and the official hair salon of the NHL. Salons are locally owned and operated and open seven days a week, and your time is valuable, which is why you can use the Great Clips check-in app to see the wait time, check in on your phone, and get your haircut when you want. For more information, check out greatclips.com. Great Clips, it's going to be great. Uh, keep it or cut it. Was it just a bad game, or did the Oilers figure out Sergei Bobrovsky? You keeping or cutting that? It's tough. I think it was both. I'm I, I'm not sure where this lies on. Did we figure him out? But when you looked at game three, more shots and crashing the net, you saw that there each one of those goals was an inch or two away from or all the saves that the, that he made on us. All the chances that we had that were really high danger chances. We're an inch or two away from going in. Mm-hmm. We just weren't getting puck luck. And I feel like in game one and game three, we didn't get that puck luck in game two. Just kind of a weird game. We're just going to not look at that game, you know, losing players. To... This game, we got every bit of puck luck we could possibly get because 
we were putting more pucks on the net, as JR was saying. And they're putting pucks on the right net in the right in his yes. kitchen. Yep. Right they finally right played a playoff game against them. They yeah. the, the defense looked shell like shell shocked. People were walking them on the regular. You know, it was it was a testament to the speed that we played at. And I think with your back against the wall like that, you had to come out and, and when you play in front of the crowd and it's that loud, I mean, it's the loudest I've ever been yeah, loudest. I've ever, ever heard it last the loudest I've ever heard. They were, that can either do one of two things. I mean, it can pump you up, which it clearly did, or it can make you nervous. It can make you like tight, scared to make a mistake, scared to, and what it did for the Oilers that night was they were not scared to make a mistake in the first five minutes of that game. They were going to impose their will and they were, they were going to live and die with the, with the decisions that they made. And they also be, got some luck early on that really helped. Oh, two, two posts. posts. Oh, that game could have been a lot different early. Two posts. And then immediately after the very next sequence is Connor Brown and Matthias Janmark. Brown Mark all of a sudden just elite on the PK. Unbelievable. Connor Brown is an amazing storyline in this final series. Yeah. Whole playoffs almost. Like or back is, half of them. He is black half. He's, he's shown up. He and, was quick. He, I mean, Matthias and Yanmark after when it was two to one, he looked like he was the best player on the ice. Oh, yeah, he, he was just on the first two goals. Oh, he was well, controlling scored. that game. Uh, yeah. And then, and then at seven fifty seven, I think it was two on one, right? Stu makes that save. Oh, that double post and that save were the two most important things that happened in that first period for us because mm-hmm. it could have changed the game. So I'm not sure if that means I keep or cut us figuring out Bobrovsky. I just think it's, we just. I think it's both. I, I, we figured them out, but we also played a completely different game. Mm-hmm. So like that I, <laughs> the net result isn't always going to be 8-1, but like that, that's the way we need to play to give our best shot to win. I'm keeping it just in the sense that they didn't let Bobrovsky see everything. Mm -hmm. They were right in the crease. They were mucking it up. They were getting greasy and they were getting playoff goals and some beautiful execution as well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think for me, the the reason I lean towards maybe figuring him out is, you know, in game one, we were giving him all sorts of shit, like get the puck up high. Why are you not getting the puck up high? And you go through those goals Okay, the first one was obviously just on the ice and a bit of a weird play. But the second one, Henrik goes to the net and isn't just trying to jam it in, right? Like he goes to the net with the purpose of like stick angled. I got to get this thing up high if I'm going to score. The next goal, Dylan Holloway flips it to his backhand and it trickles in, but it only trickles in because he elevates and it hits Bob on the underside of the arm when he's trying to go upstairs. And then it trickles in again, elevate Connor's goal, elevated nurse's goal, elevated like four or three. Yeah, four of the five goals they got on Sergei Bobrovsky, they elevated the puck, and two of them, Nurse and McDavid, like the first three were great because it was frantic and there's traffic, right? Henry's going to that, Yanmark's going to that. Those other two, they just beat him clean. Well, like he didn't, just, he even on the Nuge goal, yeah. he was there, but so was Hyman. One of those guys was going to put it in. I needed Hyman to score. <laughs> they were Real cool. bad. <laughs> we did for, for that love of the parlay, game. Hey? It would have hit. I know that was the one. And that was my leg of it. And it drove me. I thought, and in the building, they said Hyman. I know they, they said, and I was like, yes, that's my part. I also, I did my part. And then I see later that it was given to new I was pretty disappointed. Goalie controversy? Question mark. Stole our start game five? Question mark. If, if, if they, (laughs) if they pull Bob again, they don't have a choice. Can you believe that's the thing? Like go fuck. Can you believe there's actually people that like wrote and are saying that let's just say, I don't think Florida's winning this. I think that was, but that he just completely erased his chances at a con Smythe because of that one thing he did. You think he did? I, well, I why, why are we even talking? Work. Why are we even talking about him? In because uh, his question was keep it or cut it. Did we solve You're, Sergey Bobrovsky? So is he so solved that he's now lost all everything he's done I in the spin. playoffs up until this moment? Did we take that away from him, Jerry? I spin. Yes, we did. I spin. There's no spin. That's what yes, I. Yes, we did. I loved what Connor said. What's the next one? Sorry, we're going way out of ten. No, no, we're not. Ranking. You're going back. I loved what Connor said. We've got we we've got to go down to Florida and we've got a job to do and we got to drag him back to Alberta. I love and the that. The thing I was going around, I was so emotional about this, telling everyone I saw on Saturday night. I'm like, they go they go and win game five, we will win them game six, meaning the fans. 
You get back in that fucking barn in game six. You want to open tryouts? It's a game seven. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a good call. Well, that movie with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Uh, Invincible. Daddy Daker. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a click. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> no, that's not. But I, like, like, we get, they, Florida gets back in our barn in game six. <laughs> We're going to fucking win that game. Uh, no doubt in my mind about that. So they, this is how it goes. Oilers just have to win game five. Punch your ticket. And that'll be a Friday seven. night too. So that'll be vibes high. Oh. And all of a sudden, listen, if you, if the Oilers go into Florida and win game five, the Panthers are going to start getting the yips a little Ooh. bit. That, that's the other thing. They Clinched start thinking it, right? Butts. I, and I, so I've now said this on a handful of the shows I've done, but Flex. I was chatting with Frank <laughs> and he covered the reverse sweep in 2010 when the Flyers came back on the Bruins. And he said he didn't feel, and it didn't feel like Philly grabbed back momentum and turned the tables until the back half of game six. When I was like, Whoa, this thing's going to seven. Yeah. That's when he said momentum turned. It still felt like Boston was kind of in control and Philly was just kind of fighting and scratching and clawing. And I said, does Edmonton have a chance to have that moment earlier. And he said, yes, he said first five minutes of game five. And then I kind of picked it up from there. I said, if you beat Bob twice in those first five minutes, Florida hey, is dead. Today. I heard the great Elliot Friedman say momentum is not owned. It's rented. Mm -hmm. And that there is not a good chance that that will we take that momentum from game four. We'll carry into game five, but you can hope you can hope that they can go out and do that in the first five minutes because it will be so easy to that's pick the back. Thing. No, they that's can. the thing is, is, is it will, it will pick right back up if they can, yeah. if they have that start like they did before. Yeah. Kind of like when you wake up on a trip and you're still a little drunk and then you have a couple you drinks, boom, one. it's easy to yeah. get right back to where you, you, you were. You have that Bud Light and you're yeah. like, whoa, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> so the thing that annoyed me about that game and it's, we have this massive lead. That's the time when we should be setting up and taking our licks for game five. And Florida was doing it against us. Oh no. I'm predictably on the opposite side of, well, I'm not this. surprised. I know I, I, as much joy as I maybe would have gotten out of the Oilers beating the piss out of someone, the joy I felt watching Connor McDavid just laughing as Sam Bennett gave him his little shots there after that one whistle. I was just like, that is awesome. That's your way. Chuck more was teeing off on McDavid and there was no response. Fogel, you're just, you're way more in their heads. Fogel did try to get in there. You don't think that like Bennett and fucking Kachuk are like, okay, we're down. We're going to go raise shit because we have to take our pound of flesh because we're, we got to win game five. They're already playing game five in game four. Let them. We should five Let on em. three. We got a five on three. We're already up by six. Who gives a fuck? Do you exactly. Who gives a fuck? Let them do whatever they want. We Laugh should be doing the it. same thing. Ekblad, yeah. Band-Aid, get him out of the game. Focus on these guys. Do you think that was that my only thing I was pissed off about a sentence like this was uttered when the four referees were reviewing the kneeing Darnell nurse call, which was if we call another major here, this place is going to fucking Needed kill a hot us. Mic. Let's not do that. Let's just give him two. And you can it, see it clear as day on TV. Yeah. Bennett wandering down. The penalty gets reduced oh, right back on the bench. Yep. I will say that was more egregious than the Fogel one. Though. I thought so too. And then it was a two so minute. Too. And I'm like, if there was one knee out of the, but five it wasn't even a knee. Like the, the, the nurse yeah. one was, it was below the knee. Wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's still right. Like technically it wasn't a knee and that's why they called it a trip. The Fogel one, like it wasn't even a knee. I know. That's what I mean. But like out of all of them, because the Panthers laid three themselves in game one. So there's been five knees in this series. The one that deserved a major was the nurse one. I, I was convinced they weren't turning that one around. I was below the knee. It was still pretty dirty hit. Yeah. He stuck his leg out. It was a trick like, call. A dangerous trip. A knee. I if mean, he hit him in the knee, if it was knee on knee, then I it was a knee. It, okay. I think it was below the knee. And that's what I had. To if call that was on Connor, we would have been screaming for a major. They Did probably wouldn't even have called it a penalty if it was on probably Connor. not because Connor would have gotten back up. Yeah, that's embarrassing that Florida's done that so many times, three times in this series where a guy's been like, "Oh, I'm dead." Oh, he also, I'm back. like, I was watching TikTok, and the detectives of TikTok are a fascinating breed of people. <laughs> they had that knee on Bennett, and then he was wobbling around, hurting, or as if the other leg hurt. So he what he didn't even get his acting correct. He was oh limping God. the wrong way. I he was limping the wrong so way. That is tremendous. TikTok's undefeated.
in both killing time and being <laughs> investigators. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think we'll ever see a one-timer goal from Leon ever again from that side? It's only a matter of time. <laughs> I know. It's more of a joke because like if in game it, was, five. it was in, if you were to say for the Oilers, what's like the number one thing that you can almost guarantee is going to happen in a, any given game. And it was the Leon one-timer from the right side. And boy, he's not getting them off. He got that one off, which was the goal that Nugent Hopkins ended up scoring. But like, he just, they're just not there. It's just not as crisp. So I don't know. Well, Hopefully they're, they're, okay. they're, well, Bobrovsky's just waiting for it all the time. Yeah. Like That's, Bob's really, Bob cheats. Though. Like, I don't know. I, it's easier said than done. I don't know how you fake it to Leon. So he bites Yeah, and then, and just have that open net. I don't know. Like these are easier said than done Although things. According to uh, young Francis Saravalli. Well, there's already talking about Leon to Leon about an extension. So he'll have some time to work on it. How does he come to town and know all this shit? Like he's dropping that they've <laughs> opened up negotiate. How, who, why, how having hung out with Frank as I have during the playoffs, his phone is just going all day. What is he doing? Like texting Ken Holland, answer me. Like, how does he get scoops? How does it kind of, be? kind of, it seems that way. It's, I think it's like a, and I don't know if I, I, what I'm allowed to say. It's not even it's that like I know anything. It's what I think that happened. You up? There's a share of it. It's a two way street. And also like insiders will like, they help their sources. They help yeah. and then not sit to Ken Holland's on a source. Cause that would be weird. Ken but. wants some out in the news. He calls Frank. Ken wants info on another team and their plans. He calls Frank. Frank has info on that other team. He goes, here you go, Ken, but you, you need me to tell me this. Um, real? Yeah. It's yeah. all kind of, it's all about, a, it's a game of favors. Yeah. Like if you watch Frank, he is on his phone nonstop. The yes. game of phones, some would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you like that one? Two. With House of the Dragon on yesterday? Um, how about this? Because Frank was again talking about the dry saddle extension, saying they're already talking. What will be the combined AAVs of 97, 29, and Boosh? 40, 40 million. I listened to the clip. That's what he said. Yeah, that's what he said. I was more curious what you guys think. Like, I whatever Frank says, I think. I would send to agree. He seems we're to gonna know have things. to take. Yeah, four he seems to know these things. We have to take four steps back, and you explain what AV means to me first. Average, Average. annual value. There you okay, go. didn't listen. Mm-hmm. That's fair. <laughs> also interesting in that clip is Stoffer says uh, Leon has no interest in a shorter deal. A la Matthews, he wants max term. Yeah, I think that does. Like again, he's twenty nine. Well, it's gonna be bulk coin too. Yeah, that's fine. And Edmonton is the only team that can give him an eighth year. So that also plays in Edmonton's favor. If dry settle just wants to get the biggest possible sum of money, Edmonton can outbid everybody. So there is that as well. I saw that box that the spit and chicklets guys were in is real nice. It is real nice. What's that got to do with Leon? We got the cash. I see. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, they why? were like hot, after like Lincoln arms and dosy don't around. That thing. Were, like, mm, it was mm. what a unit that thing is. They are very much on the bandwagon. Oh yeah. Oh, and I mean, now you they, saw all their tweets. Like it's, it's like, and now they have to go to Florida and do it. And that then was they come the, back to Edmonton and like, they're on like a three week bender. That was part of the fun though. Like spin chicklets guys aside was just seeing all the media be in Edmonton and just see a win like that witness and yeah. see the chaos that happens in this city. Edmonton and at it, its finest. It's the opposite of the bubble cup, right? Complete Where opposite. you're like, man, oh, yeah. like I hope we get to the cup finals. Like if this is the bloody cup in the new arena, in the arena district with three people walking around and to see too, where like Steve Levy, Mark Messier and PK were doing the game from like the stat, like the standing they area above the lower bowl, like yeah. oh, the lo- like right on the grant, right on those little countertops. They just had a little cordoned off. He was, they were, he was 40 feet from me and my God, does mess look good. Like that oh, guy. He looks so good. Dude, dude, I don't know what, give a workout and I don't know what he's figured out, lifestyle. but. He, he kind of looks like 40 million out of the Canucks about 20 years ago. That's <laughs> Let's what go. He looks like he could be back out there in a way. A hundred percent. He's mm-hmm. in better shape. Yeah. Like, you know, what blew my mind was the photo of PK and Messier and Barkley. Just how much bigger Charles Barkley was than all of them. Retiring from TV. Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. Charles that's, Barkley. Yeah. That's a negotiating tactic. I guarantee. Uh, yeah. He's probably going to start his own thing. Take all those boys and he's going to have his own. Yeah. He'll do it on. Like, you don't take the best of all time show and just it cancels like immediately this is no way we're done. anyways but yeah it is amazing to see that he's so big. Oh, I know. But yeah i just i loved everybody being here and seeing the spectacle that was edmonton at our Friday. absolute best right like yeah. i swear that was a top 10 day in city history man oh for sure 
I can record uh, booze sales. I watched it downtown oh. in a bar and it was electric in there. I can only imagine what it was like in the building. It was so much fun. Yeah. And like nothing has ruined it. Remember how we talked about the guys not letting Connor McDavid pick up a couple cases of Coors Light? Mm-hmm. Well, I haven't seen any. And to the point where it's even different, where Connor actually stopped in front of a group of fans and opened his window and started signing autographs to people just standing on the street outside of Rogers. Like he didn't have to do that. Right. But like, no more negative stories. It was just all positive. Everything was so positive. And totally. that, yeah, it was down one Oh nine. There was guys running down like the middle thing there, the median, just high fiving cars on both sides. <laughs> it's just chaos at its finest. If you don't like congestion, don't go downtown on a game day. Yeah. <laughs> Stay yeah. there. Get down early. Away. Get down early and leave yeah. late. Yeah. yeah. It's oh. funny though. Everywhere. That day was busy. We have people getting ready for, I was in Twilliger at one point and the Twilliger parking lot was just like the busiest place on earth. People trying to get to like the depot, the grocery store, just preparing, I think for game day. It felt like yeah. it was. I went was for lunch live. downtown and that place was packed too. Well before the game started. Thank God it was good weather, especially because this weather has been so bad this year. My tomato best, plants, man. it was the not best. living. Oh my God. That was a weird you summer. would bring your tomato plants up at this critical junction. <laughs> Just say it has been a pretty my terrible weather. plants struggling too, Chalmers. Your jalapeno? Mm-hmm. Mm, boy. Not ideal jalapeno conditions. No. <laughs> I just want to make a spicy queso. That's all I want to do. You know what else really, really thrilled me to my toes? Was the Hope Will Never Die shirt when they came? Now, you oh my heard, god! Oh. But they're doing the intro, and the lights are low, and the music's high, and this guy comes out, mistaken and Mexican this fucking guy. Holds, oh, was it? Yeah. yeah, holds the Hope Will Never Die up like at the perfect moment of the intro, man. That's that our was rallying point. Unbelievable. He was in. Uh, he was in with McMullen, I believe. Oh man! If there's ever a time that that saying means the most, it's right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you can head to nationgear.ca now to get your hands on a hope will never die tea, which we, uh, have up on the site. I did have someone reach out to me, by the way, I want to talk to you about this. Oh no, you can't get it in the hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's nice. Someone was messaging me being like, I desperately need that in a hoodie. I'll pay however much money it takes. Oh, it's nine grand. uh, (laughs) It's $80. That's, that's however much money it takes. Yeah. I will uh, send that in. I have my blue and orange hope will never die flag hanging sick at the house right now. No. I got on the Jumbotron, I think. Really? I think to start. I think I did. What were you doing? Do you, I just I was pointed that. I, I got on at the end of it would have been, yeah, during the comeback in game three. And like I always wear my hats backwards when I'm rocking nation gear. So as soon as I see myself on, you just see me like fuck I'm yeah. turning it around as fast <laughs> as I can. I gotta get the nation logo on there. Gotta. Uh all right. We do need to step aside for a quick break. So we'll be right back after this. Back half of the podcast is brought to you by our new friends over at the Edmonton Stingers. Sensational entertainment. And guess what? When the Oilers force six games, you're going to have two nights off. Why not go check out the Stingers at home this Thursday? The two-time champs roster is headlined by returning forwards Brody Clark and Nick Hornsby. They also have added a former NBA first-round pick and Jacob Evans the third. For tickets, go to the Stingers.ca. Tickets start at 20 bucks. Parking is free and there's $5 food and beer. That is a can't miss good time. Thursday, they're back at home. They're six and two on the year. They're taking on the Ottawa Blackjacks. And if you listen to Oilers Nation every day, you can win yourself two tickets to the game as well. So there you go. Shout out to our friends at the Edmonton Stingers. Um, damn, that's something I wanted to Let's say. go back to goals during this game. The one play I feel like will never get the what it's due is when Connor Brown was going in with Yanmark on Yanmark's first goal and he had the presence of mind to go behind the net with the puck and then center it. Like if that's all Connor Brown does in the remainder of his life, he should get a five year extension. Like it was such a heads up. No, and play not just and not to get force Yanmark it and not that puck, man. Yeah. Force it on net. That's yeah. such a goal scorer. So, uh, do, like, do you guys fuck. remember like a solid was- interview with uh, Jason Greger up at a right now with Connor Brown. So game two or game one, there was a play where the pass wasn't open. Connor McDavid was on a two on one and I believe it was Hyman. And he, instead of trying to get the pass through the defenseman, which was not there, he put it off the pad, the yeah. far pad. And it went to Hyman. Hyman buried it. Well, my wife looked at me and was like, that's an unbelievable play. Do you think he meant to do that? And I was like, absolutely. Uh, that is definitely something that these guys think about because they have that wherewithal. Right. I feel like I'm having deja vu. Have you already, did we have this, this conversation? Mm-hmm. But okay, but if we did, 
it goes into what Connor Brown did even more. Here you did it. I don't remember. I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe right. I, 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 I have heard like this is, I, that's what I'm saying. Am I having deja vu? I'm not sure. You might be. Uh, well, so when he's going wide and that passing lane's cut off, Jan Mark's not totally there, and the goalie's playing him perfect, there's no bank. There's no pass, right? To not panic in that moment and do something that's that creative is super impressive. With the game on the line, man. Like, Can we talk about Yamark was about to shank that oh, thing? He, wide? No, he did. He did <laughs> shank it wide. Barkov just happened to be barreling Barkov in. Took it in with him into the net. Man, Yamark has been in the series, so my good. Ass. Those two have been so good. They're good, so good man. Like it's it heroic is shit. What they're doing, it's above and beyond. They're not. They're giving zero up. That they're outscoring the other team while they're on the that, power though. play. The Connor Brown, the the way that the beginning of the season went for him, and the whispers of you know like this is we're paying whispers. This guy mm-hmm. uh, no, the, then they get louder and louder, and the way that I think just he handled it, and internalized it, and and is now like a hugely important part of this team. This is a real credit. To He's the guy, building with every round, know? right? Like. Yeah. The fact that they were able to put the game on the shoulders of the bottom six and get the depth scoring that they needed when they needed it the most. Like, I don't know, man, that's pretty fucking incredible. I'm sure as the series goes on, the big guns are going to do their thing, but we should never, ever, ever forget that this series is going longer because of Yanmark and Brown. Connor Brown is a healthy scratch for the entire first round against the Kings. (laughs) Didn't play once. You had Yanmark and Guantanamo Bay not mm-hmm. long ago. Yeah, but now he's you? back. Mm-hmm. Can I ask a how question? Dare. I want them both resigned. And D Ryan. D Ryan, smart. Thinking Fogel, the fourth year. Fogel, yeah. Fogel, Fogel better. Fogel better. Fogel best, better. Best former Euler video montage, then cameo. We had Zach Cassian. We had Ryan Whitney. And we had Fernando Pisani. <laughs> Which one did you guys like the best? Fernando. They didn't give a video for Fernando. Yeah. Oh, they didn't give the video. For they Fernando. didn't do a montage of him scoring goals. Every Ryan Whitney got a montage. <laughs> Ryan Whitney has enough goals for a montage. <laughs> they found the three he had. Well, yeah, that's a montage. So Ryan Whitney got a montage. They're saving it. Which again, love wit. And he's now been like an Oilers supporter and one of the biggest ones. It's great. Love wit. Love Cass. He got he a montage wagon earlier. He did. But the fact that you don't play the goal from 06, the overtime winner They're before bringing on it. Fernando. They're saving for what? Game six. Let yeah. me ask you this, your M Chuck, you son of a bitch. Who's okay. gonna be the band for game six? You know someone's book. <sighs> we they talked just about haven't this pre- us. You know someone's book. So they've been sticking with Canadian acts. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Nickelback. Oh, come on, swollen be, members. It, ha- it has to uh, it, it has must to, be Nickelback. If it's, think about it. If it's Connor not Nickelback, Angle? it has to be Drake or the Beebs. But if Beebs won't Drake's if, too controversial. If, if Beebs if Beebs is a true fan, he won't do it. Nickelback. Yeah. Nickelback, Nickelback, Nickelback so it has to be Nickelback. Be Nickelback it has man. to be Nickelback. Because they must have something booked. They got the stage. They got everything worked out. You can't do that at the last second. The line for Shania was just unreal. The line that was Nick- the biggest concert yeah. the NHL's ever hosted, hey? Really? Like, to bring Shania to put her in a fan park? Like she's a she sells out stadiums. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. The fact she did it, like I respect it. I love the she fact she did looks. It. Very different than the last time you saw Shania at the Grey Cup. <laughs> yes. Can we agree? Do you remember at the Grey Cup when she came out in the canoe? Yeah. That's a Wasn't different it a Shania. dog sled? Oh, yeah, you're right. That makes more sense. But they brought her out yeah, on yeah, stage. She was sitting in a thing. Like, what? Mm-hmm. But anyways, when she went around high-fiving everybody for Amazon, that's good content. That's probably the poll, right? Is that they had budget from Amazon to bring her in. Was that Amazon at Greta then? It was that film crew at Greta. Yeah, there was a film crew at Greta, and we couldn't, we didn't figure out what it was. But yeah. the guy was wearing like the big harness with like the pulley system. On Were they the delivering him, parcels? So he doesn't have to like hold up <laughs> That's the Amazon. camera. Yeah, it's Amazon. They got fucking front row parking, unloaded all their stuff, and yeah, mm. that's pretty cool. Do you? Think that the players were like excited to have Shania in there, or were they like, no, hey, like, let's get this out of the way. Yeah. Let's take our pictures with our artist and our plumber. <laughs> and let's for them to have met Celine Dion and Shania this year, though, and the Jonas Brothers. That's a pretty good celebrity well, cavalcade. And there's also the back and forth with Hyman and Shaq. Oh yeah, Barkley and Drysidle. Championship like, teams get bandwagoners. Somebody said, and I don't know if this is true, Shaq but Hyman like our season turned should around. Be at the game tomorrow night when mm-hmm. Celine Dion went into the locker room. Like it was November when we were down in the dumps and right after they met Celine Dion, we went on our run. I mean, Celine Dion's an inspiration. Don't even get me started. 
Can I tell you? Uh, so I I love numerology and I love like what? just coincident <laughs> quince, things you that are. You love numerology. I do. I love when things <laughs> line up. Latoya Jackson over here. Does anyone know who that is? Do you yes, know? That's you astrology. Don't? Ah, she's into astrology. Never mind. Go on, Latoya. <laughs> Go on, Latoya. But you know what I mean when like things come up and they're like coincidental. Uh, and this numbers line up. Oh, this is kind the of like a thing. freaky, freaky, freaky fact. Point In 2012, Kobe Bryant walked into an LA Lakers game wearing yes. the 99 Edmonton Oilers Wayne Gretzky jersey. Yes. That night, they proceeded to win the game by scoring 99 points. Mm-hmm. Last night, June 15th, sorry, that's Saturday night, Warren Fogle walked in wearing, if you guys have probably seen it, yeah. a picture of Kobe Bryant wearing that 99 jersey. We scored eight goals. What number was Kobe Bryant? 24. 24. He was eight ah. when he started, you idiots. <laughs> He was number eight. Kind of set us up for that one, though. I know I did. I knew you were going to do it. And I I still, I was like, maybe they won't, but maybe they will. You know what the chances when they were at their lowest, what the chances they were going to make the playoffs were this year? Yeah. 5%. You know what the chances you come back from being down 3 nothing in the cup final are? 5%. They've already, remind, they've already saying, done a five percenter, Charles. I know. See, they've they've already already done it. Reminds I, me of that I, I truly believe there's a team to do it. It's the Oilers. The way they, yes, of and, course. But and, and after they played last night, and after what Connor said, just, just they got like a you, job to do tomorrow. They got a job to do. You like, got to think though of what are the remaining things that need to be like. You got to pull out all the stops. <laughs> like if the Oilers win the cup, it's because they reverse sweep. Like that yeah. is like the destiny. The Oilers way to the, win a cup. Yes. Is there going to be because they they got everyone in the country to write them off, and, and now here's the big middle finger. They've just now clenched the fist, and then slowly they win a game. The finger moves. Moves and then after game seven, motherfuckers to Let the sky. Let me hit you with a concept, Jade. Tell me your thoughts. Twenty-one gun salute, Donaires. Starting game. They six need to on t- the ice. They have to do two things. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have to do two things. They have to make. They have to put way better Donaires in those tubes. Yeah. And they have to turn up the fucking velocity on them guns. You want people getting shot. I want, I want, I want donaires splatter everywhere. Yeah. Dude. Get them out of that plastic tube. No. Just the donaires. The had their way. <laughs> Rob no, Algo. There was, there was a, there was a team in the MLB <laughs> that got sued because the gun was set too high and they were shooting hot dogs out and it nailed a lady and she like lost an eye. Maude Flanders? Yeah, but. She did it. Simpsons called it? Yeah. Again? Simpsons, Simpsons did it. <laughs> yeah. Did you know the Simpsons have an episode where the Oilers reverse sweep <laughs> oh my God. and win the Stanley Cup in 2024? Did Kobe wear the jersey? And then, yeah, man, and then it was Bolt, 2006. Millhouse wore it? Mm-hmm. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. You know what else I loved was Gene in the Moss Pit when the We Love we Gene. We Love and Gene. And he starts g- chanting, We Love Gene. <laughs> That's Gene for you. Uh, that again, it's so Gene because it makes so no Gene. sense it's to join. It's just all so wholesome. Man. It is the whole thing is so sweet. Well, he's really happy for Gene. I showed it. I showed Aaron that, and she's like, "Yeah, but why is he cheering for himself?" I'm like, "That's I Gene. think you're miss." Um, because he's Gene, and everybody else is saying we love jump. Gene, yeah. so then he starts doing it too. To have be you part. seen him get scared but by the cannon in Columbus? That's Gene. It's like okay, we're gonna, we're just gonna put this one away then. They were also like basically anytime anyone was on TV in or around the Moss Pit, they just chanted their name. Like they were chanting Emily, Emily K- Kaplan. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's Good Pete Edmonton, boys. We're it witnessing is. the greatest thing we've seen in a long time. In a long time. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Five, six, five save percentage. That was just jarring. That's to see. shocking. When he was skating off they, the ice. It they was scored, jarring. If you include game three, so the end of game three to when he got pulled, third period to middle of the second, he allowed like seven goals on 22 shots. Oh, keep it. Keep it. We keep figured him out. <sighs> Keep, keep it or it. cut it? Keep, keep it. it. Keep you it. Keep well, what do they start doing in the third period? Throwing stuff out from distance, collapsing on the net. Yep. And the look on his face when he was sitting there putting his hat on, he was so sad. <laughs> so the Bobrovsky, so the family was two sections over up up in the, the uh, Bobrovskys? Yes. They had family scattered because they flew the families in, the ones that wanted to come. They, they did? And they had to yeah. find yeah. places. Oh, yeah. Like them. Kachuk's whole family the was Kachuk's, sitting. they all left They kept putting the camera on him. I think they said... It was either they spent 150 grand or they flew up 150 people or probably both or maybe both. Yeah. They, the Panthers owner chartered a flight and brought all the family that wanted to come up from Florida. Pretty cool. So I also want to shout out the second Dill Holloway goal. 
Oh, I love because that so pass good. from McDavid Bobby was so York good. The air? Yeah, but oh. that, but that that pass from McDavid was unbelievable. So the fact that like all these guys just got an amazing amount of confidence in this game going into the next game, like I, I swear to God, like if if they can win Game Five, we can fucking do this. Oh my God. We the can difference, do this. the difference between the Miami Bass podcast I listened to after Game Three and after Game Four. Bitch. Well, why do, do you want me to say it? I mean, <laughs> you just how do you say to, Dan Lebetard. He's like okay. the most popular sports radio guy in the country. What if people don't know that he is from Miami? Like, what if? What, what if we just lose listeners being, to him just because you said his name? No, I'm being. <laughs> what if we don't have any listeners? We're out of business now. Tomorrow, in. none of this is working. None of this is plugged in. It's all fake. How would you go about referencing that you listened to somebody in Florida and that on after game three, they were just like, oh, my God, would you rather them just like lose it on purpose so Let they can come you home question. and win it to now being like, you guys, that was the best hockey team I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. And like, are you scared now? Like the difference between the way that they talked after game three and the way that they were talking today is real it's so they're scared already and Just, you don't think there's a part of the panthers locker room who's maybe a little like oh fuck. like holy shit sometimes That's i gotta win to game a, five sometimes i listen to a radio show out of new york Oh, just yeah. say it. Listen to this guy. You New, think New York Bay show? A New York Bay show. Oh, wow. Mike Francesa? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that one. Doggy? Mm. I give most of my money on a month to month basis to an OnlyFans creator from Miami, <laughs> and she is shook. Is she the one that she posted the picture of Philadelphia Eagles? Just kidding. What happened? Is that an appropriate joke, Chalmers? I don't know the backstory, so I'm going to let Some you self censor. Filmed herself like with a, with a, player for the Eagles and then like filmed him running down the hallway naked. Like they were just having a night and posted it and sent it to like all the Philadelphia Eagles coaches. seems rude of her. Different thing that got filmed. Did you see the guy in the white Sox Jersey get knocked out twice at the barrier? No. What's the where? There were like a concert or something. And this dude, are you finding it Tyler? This guy in a white Sox Jersey went to go fight a guy behind the barrier and he ended up getting knocked out twice, twice. Well, not knocked out, out, but he like down oh, to his ooh. back, like both yeah, twice. Sit down. <laughs> hey, was the guy who ran into the crowd in the PGA the guys you guys saw? Oh, oh yeah, oh. the guy that won, yeah, our best. The guy that ran into the Jeez, crowd, almost a the third guy that won time the US too. Open. So that Where's was a guy that Shambo? no one, I don't really know anything about. That guy used to not be liked, but now he's nice Love. and everyone yeah. loves him. Yep, and that's the guy you saw. Yeah, was he nice? Yep. Yeah, Bryson DeChambeau undefeated in the U.S. Open since taking a picture with the Oilers Nation crew. Worst yep. weekend, Rory McIlroy. I said I whisper in his ear, Mike, you're going to win the U.S. Open, Rory. bud. So I was, I was, I was reading about what happened with Rory. Did he have a so, chance to win? Any oh bullets? yeah, he was up. He was eight under at one point. Bryson was six under. He basically got to like the 16th hole. He missed a five, five footer for par to bogey to go to seven under. Then on 18, he's it's now six under, six under. They're tied. All Rory has to do is just par and then hope Bryson pars and they go to a playoff and Rory misses a three footer. Before that, par. Rory had made 296 consecutive Straight. putts within five feet. He missed two in the final three holes of the U S oh. open to lose so, it. So, so there's, so, so now Rory is five under Bryson's six under Bryson still has 18 to play. So Rory still got a, a hope. Bryson plays right into that hope. He puts it right next to a tree on a route, tree in his backswing, in the dirt, really tough shot. Which, to be fair, he barely made a fairway that entire round. Yeah. And so this was like, it was, there was a chance. Like, you knew this could happen. He then hits a shot into a greenside bunker, but about a 40 yard deep greenside bunker. So it's not greenside. Uh, yeah. It's like tough shot. Tough shot. The chances of putting this within four feet is like, 1.75%. 5%? 1.75%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he puts it to four feet and sinks the putt to win the U.S. Open. So, like, it was a roller coaster, but Rory, you know, he... Didn't he bogey he three of the last four holes? Yeah. Choked. Yeah, just crazy. But, but like, bogeying... Bogeying a hole is one thing. Bogeying it by missing, like, a three to four foot... Uh. And he, he even got lucky on one of them. The whole live PGA battle had a chance for the PGA to come out on top. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the, you have Rory. People love this guy. You have Bryson. People have hated this guy. And I think after this weekend, it's completely flopped. Is because he the guy Bryson, who printed his clubs? Yeah. 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 What a good. When Bryson, oh, dude, there's another story about this guy. He's unbelievable. When Bryson beat Xander Shawfield or lost to him by one stroke, he waited around till afterwards, shook his hand, was like, dude, 
awesome job. Like that was amazing. You won, whatever stuck around. Right. Rory, like the minute he, he saw the putt, he just into the car, peeled out of the parking lot. Yeah. I know it's probably drummed up a little bit, but if you're the face of the PGA and you just lost like that, stand and face the That's music. That's Rory man. McElroy calling. Stand right and face the music. Mm. Tell off John. Bryson DeChambeau has, is so analytical about the game. He has so much tech that goes into this game. You talked about the 3D printed wedges. He got asked a question that somebody had heard that he soaks his golf balls in Epsom salts. And he's like, oh my God, who told you that? And the guy's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Like, do you do that? He's like, yeah. He went on a two and a half minute breakdown of why he does it. He says, golf balls are never perfectly circumferent. He's like, when you have a sphere with dimples, there's always going to be like a high, a, a hard side and a straw, a soft side. So when you soak them in the Epsom salts, like they float with the, with the, with the, the most dense part down. So I put a little dot at the top of that ball. That allows me that when I'm putting it down to putt, that it will roll over end and over end and not sideways. So I, I was listening to it and I was just like, this guy's another level. I want to tell, I want to say shut up nerd to you just for bringing oh, I that I thought up. it was cool, man. I've kind of changed on Bryson. I mean, that's. Did you see the clip of Phil Mickelson talking about how he designs his wedge shots? Yeah. That was I showed around? my son that immediately after that's I saw so crazy, the Bryson man. one. Yeah. Anyway, I, I love that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's great. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. We got two more things to quickly knock off for the end of the podcast. First, for our friends at Bet365, the largest sports betting platform globally. Check them out. Use the promo code OILYBONUS to get in on a huge range of markets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it is never ordinary at Bet365. Let's do it, boys. Squad Bet Game I've got, I've got 5. What do you got, Jay? Money line's already locked in. Oilers come in plus 115. My bet dogs. is Oilers to win the Stanley Cup. In 5. Mm-hmm. You're not putting in a leg for the squad bet. I will put in a leg, but I thank I, you. I am betting on the others when the Stanley Cup. Are you re like re investing right now? Yes. Oh wow. You've put money on the others when the Stanley Cup? A sizable amount. You've yeah. reinvested a sizable when did amount. You do I'm going this? to start the start of the series and the odds are only plus one fifteen. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Did you ever think about hedging? No. At down three? I could have an honest question. I could have cashed out and got thirty percent of my money back. I'm glad you didn't. You don't want that bad juju. I mean, no, I didn't give up. <laughs> no, this is- uh, who's my leg? I'm a Connor, man. Uh, Connor, two points. Brown? Both. <laughs> wow. Connor, two points. Yeah. Leon Drysaddle, anytime goal. Ooh, I like it. I like it. He's due. <laughs> yeah, he's falling down the list a little right now. So it's a good spot, Charles. I would like, I, anytime goal is an easy one to go with, but. I think I would like to go with a shot prop. I think I'm going to go with dry sidle over three. Oh, you're not a three shot and a half. prop Is guy. it three and a half? I know. It's probably two and a half. It's probably two and a half, right? But if it's he's... two and a half, I would love that. Yeah, it's two and a half. Yeah, that's mine. All right. So then it just leads me to- I mean, three shots in a game, that's one period. Yeah, I got an idea. You got an idea? Connor Brown, anytime goal. Why not? Well- Let's get a little juice action. Where do we got to go down to get that one? Scroll down the bottom. <laughs> yep. Only one player worse than him. Lock that. Holy shit. Who's worse than him? Steven Lorenz. And he's going to be a healthy <laughs> scratch tomorrow. What are the Connor Brown goal odds? Um, I think it'd be about nine or 10 to one, but it's booster our parlay up to 70 to one, which makes my life easy. I'm just going to be very simply take an Evan Bouchard point, And we have an 80 to one parlay cooked up. Money line, McDavid, two points. Dry settle and Brown to each score. Dry settle, shot prop, Bouchard point. Why not? Why not us? Do you know how many shots on goal Darnell Nurse had last game? Nope. Six. That's a lot. That is a lot. He led the team because I'm just looking at this. I wanted to see if, like, Leon, it seems like Leon would get three shots with not even trying. He only had three shots last game. Yeah, he doesn't shoot the puck a lot. He's not a volume shooter. Hopkins, uh, Nuge had four. Ekholm, three. Fogel, four. Nurse had six shots and it was the first time since game five against Dallas. He even registered one. What? <laughs> he went to five straight games without a shot. Good God. Four straight games without a shot. Evan Bouchard we'll leading the out. team and hits that game. Woo. Boosh, big mean Boosh. All right. And then before we wrap up, I have a personal thing. And it's an update on a podcast thing. Parking gate is officially dead. Household house sold and the guy was gone. The, the a sold sign never even made it onto the front lawn. Like the for sale sign was up. And then that night a U-Haul backed up and he packed up all his shit and he was gone. And the next day a U-Haul pulled in some new people moved in that fast, literally in a day. And then did they parked you, four cars out in front did of Did you house. think about going to them and saying, Hey, listen, I, I just wanted I to did do you a do something for up me because 
Your hey, neighbor hey, here. According to the realtor ads I've seen on TV, they would have known that there's a weird neighbor and disclosed it to the buyer. Because that's what realtors do for 8% of your transaction. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, did, was there any point to you that was like, at when you, while you were meeting them and, shoot, and just being like, man, you know what would be great on this house? Like a garage. And then just kind of like dipping backwards, like Homer into the bushes. Yeah. Um, I that's what whole started this, is so, it not? So they backed up you all and they started moving and stuff. There's no one, I don't think they're living there yet because I don't see cars there at night. Um, so I don't think they've moved in yet. I think they're in the process of moving in. I saw they have a kid. So I saw the kid and the wife, I would assume. That's the so, dad. Oh, well, that's why. That's why I said I assume. Super short. Um, anyways, parking gate's dead. That chapter of my life is over. I will no longer Sorry have my pizza man. on the pod. Well, who knows what kind of shenanigans this new neighbor will bring to the into the mix. That is a good point. You know, you never know. You can, you can only hope maybe the bar is set high. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's the only update I had. That was the last little bit of podcast prep I had as well. well What's everyone? Oh, also. So I wore my new Connor McDavid Jersey games one and two down in Florida. Mm-hmm. So ahead of game three, I was like, should I go to the nude? Should I not? And I was like, no, I'm wearing, I want to wear my new Jersey. And they went down three, nothing getting ready to go out for uh, game four. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to wear my Connor again. Like who cares? Looking for it, looking for it. I'm like, Amber, where's my McDavid Jersey? And she was like, Oh, you left it at your parents' house. I was like, Oh shit. Well, we got to leave in five minutes. So I got to go back to my nudes Jersey and they won. So I will go nudes Jersey the rest of the house. So I wore the Holloway Jersey and walking around town. It was as if I scored those two goals. I bet. Really? It was fucking insane. Dude, I saw you. Everyone would come up, pull up Holloway, man. Good call. (laughs) Like, did you pretend you didn't know what had happened? What? <laughs> I just did? looked. I looked. I, I had finished up at the urinal. I what did you end up doing? I wore Messier. Yeah, white Messier. Just because I knew that's what Calvin yeah, Chris to. would do. I swore an oath on Twitter down 3 nothing that if the Oilers come back and reverse sweep this shit, I swear to God, I will wear a Stanley or uh, Oilers jersey every day for five years. <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> I actually don't doubt you in the slightest. I, I would don't do, either. To come back from three nothing in the either. cup finals, I the least I could do yeah. is wear a jersey oh, every day man. for five years. Just win game five, boys. Oh, fucking win it. And we'll fucking get game six dialed. One last I thing. gotta MC a wedding on Saturday. What? Oh no. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> is it an oily wedding? <laughs> It's on Saturday. Oh yeah, but I'm supposed to be down. It's down in Lacombe. I'm supposed to be down there for the for the rehearsal dinner on Friday night. I'm like, I said, I'm like, I love you all, but I have to be at this game. Hey, send me your tape from that if you're any any good. From the moss pit and do the (laughs) wedding from the game. I'm I'm gonna. Well, they keep telling me, don't worry, it's gonna be easy. You don't need to like know about the whatever. It's more just like directional. Need to know about the bride and groom, MC. Well, I know the bride and groom. Thankfully, I don't know any. I I might know some of their groomsmen and bridesmaids, but yeah, I I got six texts I need to read. My nephew is in a uh, band school, for lack of a better term, and it was their big performance at the end of the semester. And his little band was called the Oilers. Yeah, they insisted on being announced as Oilers, so they. Connor McDavid and Leon Dry. So they even go in their own names. And they were all wearing Oilers merch. That's amazing. That is a recital you can get. Did they play La Bamba. They did not know. Ah. It. I said, do the little kids know La Bamba? <laughs> well, now they know the next thing to get. My sister's like, that's too, your, your, your ask is too much of these seven year olds. <laughs> it's gotta be Nickelback. It's gotta yeah, be Nickelback. It's gotta go back. Okay. Now let's go. If it's not Nickelback Metallica, <laughs> anybody, but BK. they're on tour. I looked into it. Metallica is performing right now. It would be hard to do. I think they're getting it's. Well, I think they stick with a Canadian act, though. No. Yeah, I think it's going to be Canadian. Yeah, it's got to be Nickelback. Connor, I know, but Connor, but say call, but say it can't be. But Apple, Pike, what else are they doing? Plan. Are they still no. together? They are, but like some forty one shit. Some forty one is touring. It's got to be bigger than Shania. Or they would have had Shania go for Game Six. But Shania Game Four is guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed. You, they go to the guaranteed game. Ah, Nickelback would be tough. It has to Billy be no. talent. They are Canadians. Totally it's only a short commute. The bass players from St. Albert. The Trues? Really? What are you looking at? Bass player from Alanis Morissette? Is that a big deal? 1994. Uh, no. Tate McRae? Cool. From Calgary, I mean, that though. Is, if it was Tate McRae, that would be the most, like, 
that'd be the biggest possible Canadian act other than Drake that they could get. That's right crazy now. to me that she's that big. She's huge, That's, man. That's wow. She's going to sing that. So Houdini would it be, song? would it be Tay McRae then if it's not Nickelback? Ooh. She's, uh, she's done stuff with the NHL before. Yeah. We've yeah, seen she's it. She's at the All-Star game. Oh, she's a wow. Flames fan. Maybe. Yeah, she's a Flames fan though. Oh. That band they brought out for the closing of Rexall Place was them. Like we got them again. They're still alive. Three of them. <laughs> Do you remember? You don't it's remember just Gord Steinke's band. <gasps> oh, oh, Hidden Agenda. Hidden Agenda? Yeah. There's actually they'd, a new one now. There'd be a line for them. I'd be in. They could open. Why not? Okay. Good pod? Good pod. One thing. Book in for the weekend at game six. <gasps> the weekend. Not a bad idea. Ooh, the weekend and Bieber. Mm. Are they friends? And Drake. All three. Gang's all here. No, they're beefing. We, weekend and Drake don't get along anymore. Oh, yeah, they are beefing now. Hmm. You had Sad. one more thing? Hey, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. That hot dog thing we were talking about. Yep. Remember how I said it was fake? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that look was- at those two aren't in the finals against each other. Shocking development. Kobayashi Maru and the other idiot. They're oh, they're doing a Netflix thing together. They're, yeah. So the scandal, because I was like, there's no way that that's true. Yeah, but they're the, booting him out of the Nathan's hot dog. Finale. But they are booting him out of the Nathan's hot they dog. They are not. It's him going against the other guy in the Nathan's hot dog finale. I thought they were doing a head to head in September. Isn't this the thing that they can no. pretend? No. no. A different thing? No. They so launched their own two thing. hot dog eating events? No. Now they're now doing their own. Is. This is like a Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. It's an un- yeah. Thing. Unsanctioned. On July 4th, they Nathan's have the event. Nathan's hot dog eating contest on Coney Island. Yeah. That is not going to feature Kobayashi or Joey Chestnut. They've both gone off grid. Due to the fact that Joey Chestnut had himself an almost, or what is it called? Impossible. The impossible yeah. company. Uh, the vegan guys. Yeah. I think this is all bullshit. Sponsorship. Okay. And in turn, Netflix has offered to do a competition between the two of them. Since they, funny because last year, Kobayashi ate hot dogs on a rooftop across the street from yes. the Nathan's one. <laughs> on principle. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good episode, everybody. We'll uh, be back. Boiling on, seven. Go Oilers. We'll be back on Thursday to get ready for game six. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.